Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Braley. The campaign is Horror on the Orient Express. It's available from Chaosium. I'm the keeper of arcane lore, and this is episode 67. Our recap will be given by David Gasway as his character, Dr. Roland Kurz. So, without any further delays, let's continue our journey into the darkness. David... You're muted. It seems we are haunted by the history of our journey to the east. A pack of wolves with glowing red eyes races alongside the train where we parted ways with the vampire that murdered Dabrowski. Emilio, Thursby's bunkmate, begins asking leading questions. And though we are cautious about what we tell him so as not to seem a troop of lunatics, we agree to share intelligence, as he, it happens, is a discreet agent of the British Empire. After we pass through Sophia, we see the foul running witch house, still and perched in a lonely place. Once more in Belgrade, the army of black hens attacks, and we flee with minor injuries. Similarly, the witch herself, Babiora, pays us an ethereal visit in the dining car, leaving us with a parting curse. And then we make one step of progress and take several steps back. Law and Thursby visit Lord Margrave's room to see whether the interview with Jack Gatling has finished. Thus, we learn that Malfacat has been wearing Margrave and he has toyed cruelly with the journalist, sealing his mouth, tearing off a mass of his flesh and transforming that into a brace of squirming, biting little flesh spiders who attack. We are once again in the dark, bloodied and with further loss of sanity in human life with places we have visited before ahead of us and the enemies that still lurk there. Perhaps in the train's infirmary. Is there a doctor on the train? I'll catch up on the recent day's newspapers and see what else happens in the world. You're muted. Touche. <laughs> uh, there's quite a fuss, of course, over what's gone on. Um, you have a conversation with some of the uh, the head staff on the cool. train. And uh, uh, Emilio joins you. Uh they don't know what to do about Gatling. Uh, he's pretty much catatonic. Uh, there is no doctor on board, uh, but you don't want to take him off the train in Serbia. Uh, so the 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 chef de Bergon, uh thinks that it might be a good idea if you at least wait until you get to Italy. You know, cool. what he would consider a bit more civilized than the hospitals out in uh, in the Croatian kingdom, the kingdom of the Croats. Yeah, but he can't drink through his nose. Well, uh, is there realize, any way to give him fluids? Um, you realize open. that what's happened is the skin has been fused, but his mouth is still there. So uh, although it seems a bit gruesome, you can just slice it open. Yeah. So how long, how many days to Italy? What are we talking about? Like a day? A day yeah. and a half? Oh, you're on the third day. You should be arriving uh, sometime. Let's see, what time? Actually, yeah, at uh, 8.30 this morning, you will arrive in Trieste. 
you know, he'll make it through the night. And of course, he's obviously so mad that it's only yeah. a matter of palliative care. And we need to uh, we need to message ahead the next chance we can send a telegraph to the city. Uh, I mean, the the Orient Express needs to because they'll have the clout to let them know there's a medical emergency on the way and to have somebody. Oh, yes. By. Yeah, they'll they'll have that handled. OK. Uh, and Gabriel's face is not uh, without um, need of attention. Um, yes, a lot of that, that damnable thing did a number on me. Uh, basic first aid would be available, so you may end up with some Band-Aids. And, mm. um, uh, the next long stop, I think, is Trieste. Uh, you're you're still going through. Uh, there'll be a stop at Lub Ljubljana. I think I got that right this time. Uh, but it's not a long stop. Uh, there are police there that that could be summoned to discuss this. But if they detain anyone, uh, that's going to be a problem. Uh, would also throw the schedule of the train off. Yeah. And we don't want to be dilly-dallying because we, one way or another, we've got to get to London or else we'll waste away. But those things are all options in your in your purview. You can decide how you want to handle that or if you if you disagree with those ideas. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Ljubljana, uh, last time we were in Italy, uh, the police didn't seem to be the most understanding organization anymore. Uh, the black shirts, sir. Are... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to be talking about some magician to uh, people that tend to crack skulls if you don't agree with them. Plus, Gatling is an American. Oh, well, we can drop Gatlin off. I have no problem with that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get my own room. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so they also suggest that we try to keep this quiet from the other people on board, although that's probably going to be near impossible. They're going, rumors are going to run through the train. Yeah. This is one of the reasons I was concerned about the marks on uh, Naruto's face in particular. It does not look like he hurt himself shaving. Uh, perhaps we get a, uh, perhaps we borrow or find, oh, Gunter must have some nice silk scarves still. Oh, oh no, we yeah. don't have any of our luggage. Uh, well, I always have some in my sleeves, so don't worry. That, yeah. I got that. So, like, when we were fighting, was any of the other people in that are staying in the car, like the uh, Nakamura, uh, the Turk, who I can't seem to find his name, uh, Abu Boo, yeah, uh, Amu, uh, Amu, yeah, did did they come out of their cabin? You you didn't see that happen. Um, okay. It was at what like three in the morning. Yeah. Um, even if they woke up, they might have just you know kept themselves under their blankets and waited to see what okay. the commotion was. But okay. nobody poked their noses out. Darn it! Because I figured we could maybe eliminate it if they came out surprised. Because I doubt Malfacott would have been surprised that. Mm. Okay. So, who currently is your biggest uh, suspect? Pull up my suspect list. Oh, this is the this is the pro problem with somebody who can change their skin. Um. Yeah. Does anybody else have a room to themselves? Uh, I, I thought. Nakamura had a room to himself. Yeah, uh, Nakamura. He's in fifteen alone. Mm -hmm. Next door to 
he just seems like a likely next target just for he's all uh, being by himself uh, uh, also his personality is is also conducive to being somebody that's that could be played by someone else since he keeps to himself so much not many people really know his quirks and a lot about him uh, LaDonna and Lord Margrave each had their own rooms they are now vacant yeah I would don't mind asking the chef to try and find an upgrade okay um uh Yes, How is Sir there. Robert Harrow? Does he notice um, that I come and go at strange hours? Um, yeah, he's uh, he's the wealthy adventurer. He uh, he does tend to have difficulty sleeping. Oh. Um, so you've you've walked, you've come back to your room late and found him in there playing solitaire. And uh, and things like that, uh, but he's usually all smiles and uh, oh. neat and clean, and you know, yeah, yeah. Nakamura seems like what we should suspect, and therefore it's someone else. Naruto, you should ask the opera fellow for a little number later and see if he can steal throats as well as skins. Yes, that's... We should all do the same. We should all retest the people that we're staying with. We are yeah. running out of suspects, if they, if they remain in this car, at least, and if they have not gone back to staff. Because of his condition, we will say that they take Jack... Gatling, and they'll put him in Lord Margrave's room um, after they clear out Lord Margrave's stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, what What is the explanation for Lord Margrave's absence? Oh, uh, they don't know. They They think that his uh, his lover, La Donna Margarita, left. And so maybe he jumped off the train too, uh, at the last yeah. stop. Is does the chef de train seem very alarmed that there's no possible explanation for Gatling's appearance and condition? Oh uh, yes, he's very alarmed. Uh, but he is uh, ultimately professional about everything and. Though he's concerned, he does his. He throws himself deeply into his job, and just makes sure that, you know, the police, the the medical people are alerted that, you know, and that everything everything is kept going. Yeah. So, Lord Margrave, there'll be a thorough search of the train. When he is not found, his effects will be carefully packed and put in the the foregone. In the foregone, and if he is not recovered, they'll be sent to the estates, etc. Yeah, yeah. So room. So the first room is still Luigi and uh, and Naruda. Um, the the uh, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, that Luigi. Uh, you've you've gotten the uh, you've gotten the feeling from him all along that he's very self absorbed. So he doesn't really even seem curious about what's going on, but then he sleeps like a rock and snores like a freight train or a passenger train. <laughs> um, uh, Gunter, now your room is no longer occupied. It's just you in there. Uh, Dr. Kurz, you want to transfer to... Sir Robert Harrow's room. I'm sorry, to uh, LaDonna's room. Unless uh, the other option block is that we could room together so we could provide I, mutual protections. It seems like a wise choice. Right. Okay. So, Dr. Cruz. So I go to four. 
Yeah. Uh, so now Haro is alone. And when was the last time we saw Haro? Um, off and on. Last night. Hmm. He's the politician. Oh. You know, yeah. Yeah. Smug keeps to himself. See, that's another one. Like, uh, like uh, Nakamura keeping to oneself. Not saying much. Right. So then, um, Theodore, you are you are still in there with Emilio, the spy. Yeah, I kind of am trusting Emilio. He as seems... long as he knows the the secret word. Right. Uh oh. <laughs> it's Ross Effort. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, then you still have uh, Henry Matthew and his wife Emil, uh, Emanuela mm -hmm. that's in uh, 9 and 10 you still have Kurt Gronig and Amumu Haddad in 11 and 12 the yep. German industrialist the German yep. industrialist and the antiquities guy. and we think that he is uh, poking uh, Manuel yeah. And you did see her coming Come out. out of his oh. room. So I wonder if they're still t tight, then that would indicate that neither of them are changed because that would be pretty. Yeah, there, there'd be some bizarre. That would probably shatter the relationship taking on a totally different personality all of a sudden. Well, that's now, our, in retrospect, a bit our theory about why Margrave broke it off with LaDonna. On the other hand, we don't actually know how much information these fiends get when they steal someone's skin. They seem to be terribly skilled at imitation, mm -hmm. as if there were still echoes or half mm -hmm. memories. You you do know though that that when Malficott took on uh, Professor Smythe, he made mistakes. Yeah, it's yeah. true. And that was premeditated. So, mm -hmm. cool. so they make mistakes. So, what's... but you also still suspect that there are other. Brothers of the skin that are on this train now. Yeah. You caught in, one of them. <laughs> in the story of um, the, the, uh, in, in the, the dark ages, the, the dark age story, there was, um, wasn't there indication that who had the simulacron were, virtually indestructible you couldn't oh. like you couldn't take a knife and and kill them right yeah. well, well like, you had to you had to shatter off the armor there was ways in which to remove it remove the piece that's what the knights did the knights yeah. broke it apart piece by piece um, if you if you hit it just right on the scene it would so even off. if you determine who it is it would be a monumental task to try to get that but still, it's it's still obviously a step in the right direction. Yeah. Hmm. Do an intelligence roll. Uh, this. Make sure these are D10s and not D8s. This is the Extreme. second time. Extreme. Ooh. Second time in a row that I get in the upper 80s above my uh, 97. Ouch. And I back up Gunther's extreme with another extreme. Okay. That's cool wow. extremes. We might have just figured the whole thing out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, reminiscing, going over everything that's happened so far, um, you know that Malficott doesn't need the simulacrum to wear somebody else's skin and pretend to be them. He's done that from the beginning. Uh, 
So what the simulacrum gives you may be something far more uh, powerful than just pretending to be somebody's skin. There's no reason to believe that he's actually wearing it. Yeah. Okay, you don't shiny. need to wear it all the time. Uh, Janivar didn't wear it all the time. He just drew energy from it, so to speak. So, the train, we'll say that you guys have been wide awake uh, uh, since the attack. Um, you probably have breakfast. And the train pulls into uh, Trieste uh, at uh, 8.30 a.m. Tell me where you guys all are when the train pulls in. At 8.30 a.m.? Yeah. Uh, Having breakfast. Yep, that's what I was going to say, in the breakfast uh, car. Oh, okay. We should roll for our uh, individual parts again, no? Yeah. yeah, we can do that again. Teacher, teacher. <laughs> Shouldn't we roll? <laughs> 13, day two with no heading. 23 is a pass. 38 is a pass. Oh, 99 is not a pass. Oh. I lose two I lose two from my movement rate. <laughs> and I have the left arm and the right arm I have to roll for. So that's a fail on the string. So Gunter, uh roll a 1d20. Okay. 19. Oh. Uh, okay. So this morning when you get up, possibly because you're so tired from last night, um, the others might notice this too, is, you know, you get bags under your eyes. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got like extremely severe bags under your eyes and uh, um, the light from outside coming in really hurts. Uh, yeah, it's like getting poked in the face with a a knife. Uh, so that's what it says. Eyes descended and cannot bear the sunlight. Mm. Definitely put some sunglasses on. Or... And Theodore, or uh, who else failed? Anybody else? That was me. And oh, look at that! That might be the worst one yet. I have no idea. I rolled a one on a d twenty. Oh. Nope, that just means that you are going to sweat heavily today. Okay, oh, great. <laughs> so you've got the chills, you're sweating. Kind of like I am now in this 92 degree heat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, was there anything you wanted to do while you were in Trieste? I'm not going to, I'm not going to get off the train. I've had bad luck every time I've gotten off the train, so I'm going to... Likewise, I'm increasingly concerned about revisiting old haunts, but uh, I do want uh, to ask a porter to bring in the newspapers of the last couple of days. Right. Uh, yeah, he'll do that. And another espresso, please. Is is it? Is it, how's the weather outside? Um, it's actually kind of nice, but. For uh, Gunter, it's very bright. Yeah, it's I'm, chilly. It's chilly, yeah, but good. It's, I, I want the chilly because yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm gonna pull the curtains <laughs> if I'm sitting by a window. Mm. Thursby, your nickname when we get through all of this is going to be something like Polar Thursby, <laughs> or Thursby the Bear, or some such. Like, May move to Antarctica or someplace. Like yeah. That. Every morning he gets up and swims in the Atlantic <laughs> before breakfast, and then shakes off the icicles and giggles. Yeah, I hear uh, so, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say I hear there's a there's an interesting expedition heading down to Antarctica. I might join. <laughs> That's not for another ten years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That would be yeah. quite no, he can go on the first one. Yeah. <laughs> this dark uh, weather more expedition. 
<laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So you get the newspapers and you start to look through them. Are you looking for anything in particular? Uh, given that we have been haunted by things we saw on the journey east, I guess I'm looking for headlines regarding anything that reminds me of dangers in Paris, in Venice. Why don't you do a spot hidden for me? Uh, 16 is, I can't do the math, 66, half 33. Yeah, that's an extreme. Oh, nice. So as you are looking through the newspapers, you don't find very many things that you would consider odd or weird uh, in European news going through. But one thing does catch your eye because it mentions a place back in England, Islington. Oh, dear. Islington shopkeeper murdered, signs of a struggle. An Islington... Islington shopkeeper has been found dead under mysterious circumstances. Mr. Robert Osborne, owner of Osborne's Gentleman's Outfitters on Nelson Street, was found dead in his shop by a member of his staff as she arrived for work. Scotland Yard Detective Inspector Phillips said there was a great deal of destruction in the shop, indicating a struggle that would have been quite noisy. However, the doors were locked and there was no sign of forced entry. I would like to ask anyone who is in the vicinity of Nelson Street between the hours of 5 and 7 of yesterday morning to make themselves known to the police. Uh, You also likewise find a second article. Vagrant slain in Islington. Police, Police deny connection to shop murder. The area around the bookbinder's arms on Combe Street remains cordoned off as the police continue to investigate the murder of a vagrant in the cellars of the well-known Islington public house. Detective Inspector Joseph Phillips, the same, of Scotland Yard, stated that the body of a homeless man was discovered this morning in the cellars of the bookbinders. He had been brutally attacked, and I appeal to anyone with knowledge of this attack to come forward. When asked if this was any way related to the death of Mr. Robert Osborne on nearby Nelson Street, Detective Phillips replied, I categorically deny that the two cases are in any way related. Mr. Osborne was strangled, whereas the man in the cellar suffered a number of wounds to his chest. Oh, where is the shop that Malficat runs? I'm guessing it's also Islington. That would be... Uh... That is correct. So, a vagrant body found with puncture wounds and a strangled provider of clothing as if someone was preparing some new disguise or something. But these are his assistants or... Yeah, it seems like some kind of preparation is underway there. It's also odd that the detective is so uh, adamant, yeah, adamant about them not being connected. I mean, uh, unless there's something else he knows that's not in the story, uh, uh, the clues there do not suggest that at all. Just different methods of murder. That that doesn't conclusively mean it's two different people. Well, and Islington is a fairly nice neighbor. So it's kind of odd. Yeah. And these happened just recently, like within the last couple of days. Unless he's purposely trying to cover it up. That's the paranoia in me starting to talk. Yeah, at any rate, the shop is being prepared for the return of the triumphant mafia cart, which we must present, prevent at all costs. Um, 
The yeah, and Islington is a nice enough neighborhood, and that address is fancy enough that this gentleman's clothier is probably very high end. Yeah. Very likely. I'm wondering if maybe that investigator is on the payroll of Malpacad. Maybe that's why he's trying to keep anyone from connecting the dots there. Just an idea. Well, if the home stories are anything to go by, the Scotland Yard police have very little imagination compared to the individual rationalizations of an intelligent and observant person. Well, uh, hmm. if we're not going to detrain in Trieste for fear of somehow being attacked by an echo of the past, might I suggest we take turns sleeping a bit in the afternoon? Wise. Oh, I closing my eyes in a dark room sounds wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Things would certainly seem to be safer in the daytime because obviously people would be seen doing nasty things. Daylight. All Anything? right. Okay, go ahead. Oh no, I was just thinking like the the, the, the bizarre flesh eating spider attack. Wonder how that was summoned. That could have been midday too. I don't think so. No, because you saw Gatling earlier in the day. Well, well, true. No, I, I'm not saying it was in the day. I, my point is, is that the spiders wouldn't care if it's daytime or nighttime. It, it, not the spiders, but the person creating the spiders might. It, exactly. Well. It, it all depends on how complicated it is to create the spiders. If it's this big ritual, then yeah, okay, you'll need to have everyone mostly asleep and in the darkness. But if it's, you know, a whisper of a dozen words and a wave of a hand. Um, I think that the risk of getting caught is too great because currently his only shield is his anonymity. Yeah. Otherwise, why, if he's just going to go about his business out in the open, why just not be himself on the train? Why not just be Malphicot? He true. needs to hide. True, true. I'm, I was just saying that maybe casting certain magic isn't noticeable. Oh. I, and this is why this is why Dr. Kurz has suggested that some of us watch while the others sleep. We don't all go to sleep at the same time. Yeah. It's good. Well, I'm going to head into the darkness of my room. So, and there you go. There's your free bingo card. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, are you going to sleep through lunch? Um, we can. If I um, like wake up and my, I still feel like the feeling like I've got a migraine. Then yeah, because. I imagine this pain so bad that kind of gives you a little nausea even. So let's see if you're going, let's say you're going to, to bed. We'll say around 10, 10 AM mm -hmm. is when you end up in bed. Um, you were right. Uh, the, um, Oh no, I'm sorry. What time were you in? Uh, you were at eight 30, eight 30 AM uh, at breakfast. When you so say nine 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nine 30 is about the time that the train departs from Trieste. So that's a good time. You can listen to the click, 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 click of the wheels, and uh, it, it puts you to sleep. You will be arriving in Milan uh, at 4.10 p.m. in the afternoon. So mm. you can pretty much sleep through lunch, get up in the afternoon. Of course, there's always food available for you. You, yeah. want it. Um, you can also order in your rooms, by the way. They'll bring your food to you. Um, all right. They still have those little roast beef sandwiches with the au jus de sauce. Yeah. Make sure I order a couple of those. And they're not crawling at you across the <laughs> yeah. Uh so we'll say that you uh you uh you wake up a little after, let's say around four thirty. Uh the sun is low in the sky, so you're heading back into evening. 
Um, what are you, tell me what you guys, describe what you guys are doing now that you're kind of waking up. Uh, I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you a uh, uh, first aid, uh, or what is it, a refresh for having slept. Uh, you can have some hit points back if you've lost them. Okay. Yes, I've, I I desperately need those. <laughs> yeah. You, you so know. how many hit points? Do a one d six and take one one or two, yeah. Uh, when they are, I mean, uh, one or two. So, however yeah. you want to couch one or two. When they are awake, I will go to sleep then. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't sleep oh. in the daytime. No, I, I was on guard duty. For... Okay, you were on guard duty. Okay. So. The train seems unusually subdued. You guys have been through a lot, and you mm. guys have been on guard, and you guys have been very tense, and you keep waiting for Malfacott to make a move. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing happens today. Nothing happens as, as you're going into the evening. Um, uh. The train... Uh, uh, leaves uh, Milan and it starts and now you're heading up into the Alps and as you recall uh, you go up the, the Simplon Pass, you get to the Simplon Tunnel, you go through and when you emerge on the other side you are in uh, France I believe no you're in Switzerland, sorry yeah um, uh, so the train, uh, everything seems normal. People are, you know, going about their business. They're they're in the lounge. They're drinking. They're eating, and so forth. Uh, Thursby, do a uh, constitution. Oh, constitution. I'm sorry, dexterity. dexterity. Dex while I'm sleeping. Okay. Yes. Do I take a modifier then? Uh, like no, a just you can just oh. do a regular. All right, there is a 56, 56, yeah, 56, and that means a a normal pass. A normal pass, okay. So the train has left Milan, it's going across the countryside, and it begins to go up the incline uh, into the Alps, winding its way up there, heading towards the tunnel. Um. As you're laying in bed and you are asleep, something suddenly sort of jolts you awake. Uh, you almost roll out of the cot. Uh, and it feels almost like something happened to the train. The, the train has jolted. Uh, the rest of you, if you're awake, uh, do spot hiddens. 21 is going to be a hard success. I have a regular only. Fail only. Okay. Yep. Um, so we'll say, Dr. Neruda, you are, uh, uh, you guys are sitting in the lounge or the, the, the rest, we'll say the lounge. And the the train suddenly has this, this jerk of mo 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 momentum as if it was suddenly pushed to go faster. And you invariably look out the window. And as you look out the window, a man uh, dressed in a red and white striped uh, uh, Santa Claus. Uh, engineer's uh, uniform, you see him lying face down in the dirt uh, as his unmoving body suddenly goes by outside the train and the train begins to pick up speed uh other everybody else on the train has noticed that you know what the heck's going on be, uh, uh is there a uh, <clears throat> employee here uh, yeah, and you notice that they sort of look around too, because 
normally when the train hits the incline, it slows yeah. down quite a bit yeah. going up. Um, I got is um something. Do you know is something going on? Is this a planned uh, acceleration? I don't know, Monsieur. Uh, uh, I, I will see. You know, mm-hmm. but you notice the other employees are a little bit disconcerted. The Correct. train doesn't normally start to speed up. No. Uh, Theodore, what do you do? Um, okay, so if, if there's a, I'm jostled awake, have I had adequate rest or? Yeah, I mean, you've had, you know, a, a few hours. We'll say, uh, you got in bed. This is maybe, oh, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. You had a few hours of sleep. Okay, all right. So, yeah, I'll, I'll But something back. seems wrong with the train. Yeah, I'll, I'll head out to the, uh to the uh to the lounge car and see if i can find the others to see what's going on yeah you see so you all get back together uh well, all i saw was there was the body of a man out there like like a train engineer like like he was thrown overboard or or out the train i don't know but i think i think somebody is taken over the train what? Well, yeah, we should. I think the locomotive has been. Oh, they're trying to get back sooner, perhaps. Oh. Or, I don't know, but like if Dr. Neruda saw the uh, engineer, then, and we're speeding yeah. up, then let, I, let's uh, go. Let's get, let's get, yeah, let's, get let, let's move forward. I'll, I'll swing by my, my uh, cabin and make sure I, I, Grab uh, my my uh, Webley. Yeah. Okay. Thirsty, have you seen Emilio? Uh, did, did I see him when I got up from the room, or was he? Oh, uh, you probably Emilio's probably out there with you in the. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's probably armed as well, and will be alarmed yeah. by the circumstance. What do you think, Monsieur? Has, has something happened? Yes, I believe that um, something has gone wrong with the uh, at, in the locomotive. Should I think somebody's taken over the. I think somebody's taken over the train. Yeah, I told him about the train engineer by the side of the road. Yeah, that's how the train tracks. So Emilio is, then is talking to the chef de Bragan, the chef de train. Uh, uh, it's it's obviously becoming a bit of an alarm. Uh, uh, but mostly the employees of the train are going to try and keep the passengers calm. Uh, but are you going to join then Emilio and maybe a couple of other people on the train to see if they can find out what's going on? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. As long as that means we're moving forward to the engine, then yeah. yeah. So, so you we're go through directly the... at an incline, yes, not a decline. Yeah, you're you're going up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be bad when we get start going back down at this speed. And if they're trying to get somewhere fast and they don't care anymore about tipping their hand, they may disconnect cars, so we should all move forward. Well, it would be early for him to decouple, I would think, but who knows? Yeah, I don't know what they're planning. This is unusual, like the tipping their hand like that. We got let's go. And I'm gonna limp along because I've Build my role, so I'm moving pretty slow, actually. Yeah. Okay. So you you move through. Uh, you were in the lounge. You were in the lounge car. You move through a couple of sleepers. You go into the restaurant. Uh, people are upset. People don't know what's going on, uh, and the train is definitely picking up some speed. Now we're not talking a tremendous amount of speed from our day and age, but it's definitely going faster than it should be on this track. Um, you go through the restaurant, you go through a couple more sleeper cars, and then you go into the, there's the kitchen and then the, the foregons, uh, the, uh, guards in the foregons are of course surprised and alerted as well. Uh, and they begin to, uh, guide you up to the front. Now, when you get to the front, when you open up the door from the foregon, uh, you've got the coal car. And then you've got the engine. Mm-hmm. 
But before they do that, uh, there is a kind of an intercom system that they have, and uh, they try contacting the engine. You know, uh, what's going on? Why are you speeding up? And so forth. They get no response at all. Hmm. That's not a good sign at all. Th Thursby, hmm. uh, I do not wish to put you in a particular position of danger, but I wonder if it wouldn't be wise as some of us when the guards progress through the train, if there was a brave adventurer who progressed along on the outside of the train, where he's less likely to have defenses. Is is there? Uh, I would assume that there are railings and such. Oh, there are no. ladders at each junction where the two trains. Meet. My failed uh, right arm roll, though, it's just making me sweaty, or does it mean I'm really weak? Also, just right sweaty. Arm? Okay, all right. So I'll come. Yeah, all right. It's, if, as long as there's, and I believe there are like little, little uh, uh, ladder. Okay. Yeah, it's, there's ladders. Built-in ladder, then yeah, then I'll, yeah, I can try that. It's yeah. nice and breezy out there also. Yeah, and that'll help. Uh, you guys won't have to, uh, again, apologize for this sweating. I'm just sweating like a pig, and it's... <laughs> okay, so here's the foregone like this. Mm -hmm. And we'll say, here's the cold car and the train. Now, once you go out the door of the cold car, you're exposed to the outside, and, you know, there's no covering yeah. Over the train or over this. Do you go out this door or do you go out this door back here and try to go up? Which door do you go out? Oh, oh, yeah, that might be even better. If I go out uh, instead of the car door that's adjacent to the cold car, the other one on the opposite side of that car, then I could climb up and use the the railing along the top of the car forward, which would uh, allow me uh, to be not, a, if they're covering the door, looking at the door, then uh, I will okay. I will not be there, so their eyes won't be trained there. All right. So you uh, you have to unfasten the uh, the accordion thing that it you know, keeps people from falling off, but there is a ladder there. There's a ladder on each car for maintenance and so forth. You swing out and you start to climb up there, and just as you get to the top of the car, and you pull your head up and over, uh, uh -huh. you can see that it's going to be fairly easy to climb out onto the top. The train yeah. is fairly wide. Uh, it's like, it's mostly it's, flat, it's a little slightly curved, but it's fairly flat. Besides, I think you did this when you were in the dream world, and uh, oh yeah, and in the center of the car roof, there's a little little divot too. I yeah, think there's a little in that, divot, up like like three or four inches on either side. Then a car curves over, and of course there's there's the wind, but the wind, you know, the wind is strong and it's icy. But for you, that doesn't feel bad at I'm all. I'm loving it. I'm taking it in. Oh, this is the best idea Dr. Kurz has had all day. The uh, the thing that disconcerts you is that there seems to be a kind of glow coming from up ahead from the train engine itself, as if, you know, like St. Elmo's fire or electricity were dancing around the engine. Oh, uh, gosh, there's a walkie-talkie when you need it. It's dark, but do a spot hidden for me as you're yeah. looking. Oh, this isn't good. All righty. Ooh, 64. I think that's still a success, though. Yeah, it is just a success. So it's a little tricky to see, but you can see that there is a man. He's actually on the front end of the coal car. And his hands are like this as the train is moving forward. And you can see him because that sparkling sort of electricity all around the engine is uh, highlighting him in the dark. Is he, he, is he like tied up like that or is he like casting a spell like that? That's he looks like he's no he's he's definitely casting some sort of oh okay 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 this this is not good okay so he he's 
um, okay, so it's just one car. How how far long are these cars? These are like what forty feet? More or less, yeah, forty feet. Forty feet. Say. So 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 I am about forty, fifty, maybe sixty feet. Then this is a yeah. pretty short range shot. I I think I'm going to just lay down, brace myself in between the two of the there, and I, I'm going to I. I'm I'm too paranoid. This this guy, that's not good. This is not good. Okay. You're gonna take a pot shot at him? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll just like right there. Yeah, he's yeah, he's got to go. Okay, go ahead and roll for your shot. If it was anyone else, I'd make a penalty because of the wind, but you kind of like it. <laughs> I like it. Ooh, that is a solid hit. It is okay. see how good of a solid hit. Darn it, it's not it's not it's it's a it's a hit. It's a success. How many points of damage? Um let's see. Okay, so that is a 1D6, no 1D, 1D2 plus two. Okay, one second. Uh where's the 1D10? Oh here it is right here. Okay, so that is seven plus two, nine. Nine points. Oh, oh nine points. Yes. Uh you you hit him possibly square in the back. And all you see when that happens is he falls forward and possibly you can imagine that he just fell right through to the tracks and is is gone. But as soon and, and all of you inside, you hear Thursby fire or you hear a gun fire. Mm-hmm. And within a, just a second or two, you start to hear more guns firing. And Thursby, you get down because bullets are flying in your direction. From the engine car? From the engine car. Okay. Possibly from in between the engine car and the, the coal car. Mm-hmm. You realize the coal car itself makes a pretty good, uh, it's a gigantic eye, gigantic chunk of iron, an iron bucket. Yeah. So the bullets of this day and age don't don't penetrate that. As, as b- being I'm on the top of, of one car, uh-huh. and they're going to be forward the 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 whole distance of the coal car and they're in the right. engine car but they're not they're lower here. down they're down here so if right. i just simply crawl back along the roof just five feet i'm going to be not even visible to them correct you're yeah. not very visible to them at all there's no light behind you yeah so i'll i'll do that okay so you scooch back a little bit okay yeah. what do the rest of you want to do a gunfight well, we- is obviously we haven't got the information, of course, that Thursby has. My feeling, uh, I mean, we have to press forward, but we, yeah. we have to send the guards forward because well, I'm not armed. Yeah, the guards are armed. So they'll they'll immediately open the door, but they everybody gets down low so that the coal car is actually in between you and the engine. Um, they push open the door. And there are, in fact, a couple of bullets that hit the front end of the car you're in, the foregone. gone. Uh, but you've got this big wall of iron, which is the back end of the coal car, in between. So they start to scoot forward and try to get a, a place of advantage where they can fire. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Part of me wants to go back to the lounge and order something because this is not Malficat. Malficat does not have a team shooting, I think. Mm. It's, uh, it's probably he had enough stops that he could have gotten a whole bunch yeah. of. Yeah, he's been gathering a crew. Now, how do you get past the coal car to get to the engine? Do you just got like. All across the coal, you can or go there... up and over, or you can go around the sides. But Ooh. you're talking about holding on. You yeah, know, there's I... probably a ledge about like that. Oh, like... and and all they have to do is just lean out of the engine car and shoot along the side. It's that's terrifying. Well, I think like oh, I'm not there. Sorry. The guards are going to be sh- our guard. The guards we have are going to be shooting at them. Correct. Yes. Uh, so, like, I'm going to try and come out, and I'm not going to try and walk along the side of it. That seems like a good way to fall off and get run over. So, I'm going to try and. There's uh, handy holds, you know. So. Yeah, but yeah, I, I've got an injured leg and everything else. So, <laughs> I'm going to go up and, you know, kind of crawl, low crawl across the coal. I was a World War One vet. So, you know, I'm kind of used to 
crawling right. and crappy terrain. Is the coal car covered so as not to have the coal get wet in the rain, or is it open air? Uh, the back half of it is covered with canvas, but the front end is kind of open so that they can coal into the, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I think it burns wet. It's just And... Kind of and the, you know, if I could paint the picture for you, the blast, the wind, the cold, the train oh. rumbling and, and, you know, almost, you can feel it sort of almost floating and the speed now of the things going by on the side of yours picking up, we'll say like 60 or 70 miles an hour. Fast. That's pretty fast. Whoa, that yes. Falling really... off the train at this speed would probably kill you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so this, so the guy casting the spell really shoved us forward in speed. Wow. Gotcha, gotcha, go. Yeah. Yeah. Also, this and, track is probably fairly narrow and the train is fairly top heavy. I, I'm worried about just the simple physics of it staying. And there are some twists and turns going up too. Um, uh, yeah, Theodore, the sparkling didn't stop when you killed that guy. Oh, oh yeah. it wasn't around him. It was around forward in the... It was around the train itself. Yeah. The, the, the engine. engine car or the whole train? It looks like the engine. Yeah. Okay. The it's, engine. It's, okay. it's still sparkling. Okay. And it's staying steady? It's steady sparkling or is it pretty starting much. to... No, it's, it's pretty much staying steady. All right. So this is what I'd like to do. It, oh, can... It, is, is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh you, uh, uh, no, we're hiding behind the soldiers, waiting for them to get picked off uh -huh. while we yeah. figure out the magic, uh, well, except for Bloch, yeah. So, so this, this is my idea, then. I will, I retreated quickly. Hopefully they didn't see me, because the, the rounds were, like, wild and all over the place. So I'm going to crawl up just a tiny bit, like, just, like, not lying way out exposed, but just so I have that first two or three inches of vision into walkable space. And I'm just going to lay there looking right at that little two or three inch slit that I have looking just into their space. So there's virtually none of me exposed. I'm just seeing this little vision slit. And if anybody walks in there, I'm just going to be ready to take a shot right there in, in, at you are covered enough that in order for me to hit you, I'd have to get an extreme, and I'm not getting an extreme. So occasionally a bullet will ricochet off the uh, the train <laughs> car itself. Um, you can definitely see some shapes in there moving around. Um, I would but, like... Uh, do a spot hidden for me. Sure, spot hidden. Come on, that's yeah. a good skill of mine. Ooh, that's 38. That's low. I That's definitely a success. Is it a... Darn it. Uh, okay, I'm going to spend three luck to make it a hard. Make it a hard. Okay. Make it a hard, because I really want to see this, because I really want to put a round between someone's eyes right now. So because of this bluish, purplish sort of glow, it kind of works to their detriment in that you can see their shapes because they're they're black against it. Yeah. Um, you estimate that there are four people up there. Okay. And they aren't, there may be more because the four of them are not driving the train. They are shooting back at you guys. Okay. All right. Well, just, it's, it's a, it's a steady process. That's just one at a time. I'm going to take the best shot I have at the most exposed person and just go right down the list. Okay. Again, keeping that, my, my focus is to, right. to be overly exposed to see everything, but just to have a little vision slit that I can see through. And it's You're still... You're snipering them, yeah. Yeah, looking into the area. Go ahead. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, cool. Here we go. Come on, come on. Be nice. Be nice. Hey, that's not bad. 26. I think that might be a... Yeah, that is a hard success. Okay. Do a, 
Do you hit one of them? Do a, okay. a damage yeah. again. Okay, come on, come on. A big number. Big number plus two. Nine plus two, eleven. Once again, you hit one of them that's, that's shooting from uh, kind of towards the side, and he suddenly goes, ah, oh, like that, and you see him <laughs> fall off the, the train. Will, Will helps. And, and the, <laughs> the, the, the heaviness of the train means that when it cuts him in half, it doesn't even do this. It just plows him like it's nothing. Um, one of the guards, likewise, uh, fires his gun, and uh, you see one of them reel back like he's been hit, but he doesn't fall out off the train. Um, and it's then, Theodore, that you notice that you are quickly approaching the Simplon Tunnel. Ah! Oh, that's not good. That's not good. So, okay, we will start crawling back and go, go back into the car. Now, there is room. I mean, it's the tunnel's not like like that right up to the train but you wouldn't be able to stand up on top of the train yeah. going and the thing the is um theodore would not know that so theodore does not want to risk you know that of there's course. enough room so all right I'm, so the coal smoke is going to be very different for your experience inside the tunnel yeah all right so, I'm, yeah. so I'm crawling back to get back down. So like, just as you get to the back of the of the foregone and start to climb down, the train plunges into the uh, Simplon tunnel. And uh I mean there's there's part of it that's kind of picturesque because the whole front end of it is lit up by hmm. little bolts of blue and purple lightning that are shooting all around it. Um but for the rest of the train, everything goes kind of dark. And this is a very long tunnel. What is it? Uh, I forget, 12 miles or something like that. We're going about um, 60 miles an hour. And you're going like 60 miles an hour. So uh, uh, the guards also pull back because hanging on the side of the train when it gets to the tunnel is very dangerous. Um. What do you do while you're inside? What are, what are your plans at this point? The, the gunfighting sh stops, more or less. But you have 20 minutes or 10 minutes to yeah. make some plans. I, I just update everybody as to what I saw. I think there's, there's uh, I got two of them. I think there's three more guards left, but I think they were just focused on guarding. So there's probably a fourth one, at least maybe a, a fifth one that are tending the engine. So. Yeah. They might not need to shuffle coal if it is being driven by this magical eerie glow. I but got rid of the is... guy casting, but I don't know. Maybe someone else is casting, and I just don't see it. I don't well, know how to pass this. Uh, the intercom, I assume that the, whatever other guards there are on the train will be summoned also, because there's yeah. clearly been a, a theft, as it were, uh, a hijacking. Yeah, hijacking, yeah. I don't know if we have the word yet. Uh, yes. While we're in the foregone, I'm going to look around and see if there's a crate that's got the simulacrum mm -hmm. in it. Because he's not necessarily wearing it. He's just poking through. Or if there's a manifest, I'll look down that. There's a... Uh, we've got two foregones. Uh, why don't you do a spot hidden for me? Oh, six. That is extreme. Okay. Um, what you find, at least in the the, the final foreground, the what the first foreground that you're in, uh, is that if you if you if you have the simulacrum, and I mean you've carried it around in trunks all yeah. this time, it could be in any one of a hundred boxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like like the the vampire who is in a human sized box, yeah. um, and these things are packed in there. But yeah, I mean, you're you're pretty sure that it you, that it's probably there. 
It's just you don't know how to how to locate which one it would be. And if I move systematically along the the rows and levels, leading my head towards something, feeling for a twinge or a pain or or relief, there's no change. Yeah, nothing. But something does happen. You don't know if it's related or not. At at a certain point inside that tunnel, uh, you all you all feel this. It's almost as if, for just a moment, everything holds its breath. It's as if everything stops for just just a second, like a glitch, uh, and then it continues. But it definitely feels like something just happened. Hmm. Is it? Uh, do we think does the Simplon tunnel is it more or less straight, or does it have it's, an apex and a descent? I'm pretty sure it's straight. If you're gonna blast through a mountain range for twelve miles, you might as well. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, gentlemen, any last requests? Uh, 20 kilometers long is how long it is. So that's, yeah, that's about 12 miles, I think. Yeah. Probably. 12, 12 minutes and 60 miles an hour. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I think your mic's all messed up, Morgan. <laughs> we didn't understand that at all. You understand me now? Yes. Okay. Weird. So say I keep a letter in my pocket that you can mail to my wife if it's uh, if I don't survive. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If your pocket and letter still survive, so that's sure. true. I mean. So, we can I get up there? Uh, so after 10 minutes, mm -hmm. um, because it doesn't take as long to get through the Simplon Tunnel when you're doing 60 miles an hour, um, uh, you just suddenly come blasting out of the tunnel. Uh, the guards step forward to see if they can shoot again, and they suddenly uh, recoil in fear. Uh, oh. From what they're seeing, and you guys are still kind of behind the cold car, so you can't quite see. You um, get out of the way. What the hell are you looking at? I'm gonna mm -hmm. something. Oh, can Gunter happening. see it from inside the coal? Yeah, because I'd crawled up onto the coal. Oh, you called up on, on top of the coal. Um, yep. yeah, uh, something is happening to the engine. Uh, it is looking much, much more flesh-like. Mm -hmm. It seems to be growing appendages very much like Mimi. Like Mimi. <laughs> um, part of it is flared back and the speed is increasing. Uh, Gunter, do a spot hidden for me. Come on, Dex. 32 is a... I'll spend a point of luck to pass. Okay. The uh, train is rattling as you're moving forward. And you wonder about your friends that mm -hmm. are kind of behind you. And you look back at them and you notice something else. There is what looks like, at first, another train. And the other train is on the tracks behind the Orient Express. And it is gaining quickly on the Orient Express, only it doesn't just look like a train car. Oddly enough, it looks like somebody built a cathedral on top of the car. You can hmm. see it against the, the night sky. It's black. 
and it definitely looks like a big church cathedral. And there are lights inside, and you can see them streaming through the stained glass windows that are all over it. And as it moves forward, the most bizarre thing you've ever imagined sort of happens. The other train cars that are on the Orient Express, they somehow seem to sort of move out of the way one by one as this cathedral car keeps pushing forward on the train. And it gets about as far as the restaurant and then sort of merges itself into the train itself. But there's this huge cathedral on top of it. Huh. It's the most bizarre thing you've ever seen. Yeah. Now, the other is you don't see this, but if, if Gunter's telling you. Yeah. But like, yeah. And so the engine's turning fleshy. And the then I see that. Fleshy. Yeah. I'm going to crawl back because uh, I won't get into a flesh monster. That's gross. Then I, I, I crawl back and I uh, hop down. And I was like, uh, there's another car on the train that has a building attached to it. Probably what? A little bit more excited than that. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know any other way to s s explain it. Like uh, uh, the other train car caught up. It had a cathedral on it. 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 I wish I was on drugs. <laughs> yeah. so. How do Gunter's eyes look? Bloodshot. <laughs> yeah. Uh so the soldiers began to go around the coal car again. Is it still is still there a visible glow from the front? Yes. It's in fact it's brighter. And the guards now are terrified of what they've seen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh and if we uh lean around the edge of the foregone behind, is there another some extra train visible? Does it yes. also? Uh -huh. You see it quite clearly. A gigantic cathedral attached itself to the train behind you. Is it you. too tall to have gone through the tunnel yes. as a physical entity? Yes, most definitely. Is it translucent at all, or is it solid seeming? Looks pretty solid. It's black against the sky, except for the stained glass windows that are all glowing. The stained glass is like a medieval rose window, just a yes. pretty concentric, no Christian iconography or some. Um, no, but do a do an idea or an idea roll. Say an idea roll. I probably don't. Need ah, uh, another extreme. I've got double zeros. As you're looking at it, you can definitely hear the sound of a big bell. Uh, the bell's not ringing normally. It's ringing as if it were shaking in a tower that was attached to, you know, so uh, occasionally a clang, cl clang, clang like this. Are we but still... it looks like maybe the cathedral from Lausanne. Yeah, this it's... <laughs> That's the Jigsaw Prince come back, maybe. We have also had some... We have done some bell crimes, or clockwork crimes. Uh, yeah. But the thing in front, Bloch, you reminds you of Mimi, who yeah. was horrific, but yeah, not also friendly. Well, it was, uh, it didn't give me the comfortable feeling like when Mimi was there. You, know, uh, you didn't just think of a gin and tonic and it appeared mm, next to you. No, no, I, I, I. If, <laughs> if Mimi was a kitten, this thing is a lion. Yeah. I are feel we... as though we are caught between things that are much outside of our ken again. Yeah. Are we still going about 60 miles an hour or are we are. increasing even more? Okay, so we've 
peaked out at about 60. Yeah. And you are uh, probably about to start going down the hill, which you might pick up even more speed. Yeah, we can't just stay here. We've got to put a stop to this. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to go back on top of the car then to try to finish off. Maybe maybe if I can take one more out, that can help the guards forward. It's yeah, we have to get in control of the engine. As then you can, the engines fleshy now. I don't know. <laughs> as you as you look at this, um, the 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 people who are up front are no longer. Uh, in the protection of the of the train house uh they're sort of clinging to the outside of this fleshy thing which makes them really good targets oh is the fleshy thing like helping them or eating them or... well they don't seem to be concerned with it but you can see that they're struggling to hold on because it's no longer a train engine it's okay it's flesh and wobbly and and it has eyes and things on it and it's it's a nightmare you can do a sanity roll for all yeah i think that's just gonna be what has to happen here i hope i don't lose it and then jump off the train (laughs) oh come on oh no 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 oh thank god yeah double oh (laughs) three thought i rolled a hundred for a second yeah i didn't it does not bother me with my nice little roll of 14. I mean, it bothers me only as much as it does. It's been a fail. long couple of days. Yeah, if fail. You, if you fail, do a 1d4. Otherwise, just take uh, 1d2. Two points. No, two, uh, Part of you is just saying, this can't get any crazier. Yeah. Uh, three points lost. No, geez. All right. Um, hmm. All right. So, Gunter, you find it difficult to look at this thing, and you can see yeah. that it's it's not static. It is changing as you're looking at it. It is becoming more and more flesh-like, and you're not so sure that it ends with the engine, that the coal car itself is starting to be incorporated into it. You can now see that the that the uh, the the coal where you throw in the coal, you stoke the furnace. The furnace itself has become very much like a gigantic, burning, flaming mouth, mm. and uh, not unlike uh, Baba Yaga's hut, as you recall, when her fireplace turned into a a giant mouth. But this is definitely evil magic. Um, what do you want to do? Um, uh, Theodore and, and Gunter, both you guys are in positions where you can um, shoot. Yeah, I'm not fully certain what good this will do, but they're at least cultists, so I'll shoot a cultist. Uh, just if we can get rid of them, who knows? Maybe they're tainting the flesh. I, I don't know. So I'll shoot a cultist. Okay. Go ahead. I'm I'm crawling up onto the coal car as well to try to get nearer that thing. And looking back, is it is it is it like the cathedral is hooking onto the back of the Orient Express, or it's? Well, that's what you don't quite understand. Gunter saw it happen, but for you, it's fork on, fork on, and then the cathedral. Yeah, I don't know that's... how it could have attached itself to the middle of the train. You don't know. I want to go as they're all going forward. I want to go back to see what the hell that is. <laughs> yeah, I'll join you. We have a foreguard and a rear guard, and the foregone and the foregone. Okay. So, Doctor Neruda and Doctor Kurz, you are heading back towards it. Um, uh, Gunter and Theodore. Uh, it looks like Theodore uh, had a hit. Go oh, ahead yeah, roll damage. had a hit for 10 damage. Okay. Once again, one of them goes off, falls off the train. Fire. Uh, okay. In fact, he doesn't quite fall off because the a tentacle from the engine grabs a hold of him in midair, pulls it back, and then just tosses him into its own mouth. 
Yeah. You see for a moment a writhing man being thrown into the flames of its mouth, but he was already shot and he was going to yeah, die. Yeah. So yeah, might as well use him. I think there's two guys left. Go to mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I've got this 45 revolver that uh, the ambassador gave me. To line up. And uh, hmm. 86 is uh, not a hit. Okay. You shoot. Yeah. And uh, uh, these guys are in no position to shoot back. Um, but, you know, you, you come near one, he tries to duck. Mm -hmm. And you end up hitting you you're pretty sure though that you hit the engine thing. Yeah, I mean, um, huge. <laughs> and the engine thing had no reaction whatsoever yeah. to the bullet. Um let's let's play this out. Uh Gunter, I mean uh Theater, you can go again. Okay, yeah, I'll just I'll just try to finish them. Fifty what is that? Fifty six. That is that is a regular hit. And then right. let's get the 10 plus two. That is a, oh, wow, gosh, I am on fire. That's a seven plus two. That's nine, nine. Wow, I'm fine. Okay, and he does not keep his footing. He also goes off. Ah! So he falls <laughs> off uh, the train. And once again, the thing catches him in midair and just sucks him into that flaming mouth. And Maybe you feel I'm the train... You feel the train give a little bit of lurch forward, like it's getting even faster now. I might be making friends with this thing. I'm feeding it. <laughs> yeah. Gunter. Gunter. So there's one cultist left? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, take a little bit more time here to, to aim it up. And that 90 is even worse. I mean, you know, this, I'm hitting that train really well. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Nothing. Uh, damn. Theodore, go ahead. All right, well, here we go. Sure, I'm going to miss eventually here. Wait, what's this? I think this is a miss. This is a 64. Oh, but 64 out of 74. It's still a hit. That's a... Oh, my gosh. That's the best one yet. It's a 10 plus 2. Wow, I am on right. fire with this. You get thing. a headshot. The guy falls off the train and once again is consumed by the train and the train picks up a little speed as this mm. happens. But now, as far as you know, there's nobody up there where that uh, thing is. But there's no controls to slow down because now it's not an engine. It's a thing. It's a oh. thing. Okay. And it doesn't seem to be lessening at all. Yeah. So, God, what the well, heck? I'm, now that no one's there, I'm going to uh, hop down from the coal car and try and actually look at, look in there. Okay, so you're going to go forward on the coal. Yeah, yeah. Um, do a sanity roll. 98. Mm, they're going nice. to wrap around and start getting low again. Okay. <laughs> so as you clear the end of the, of the coal car and you look over into this thing, it's, it's a cosmic horror. It's... Mm -hmm. Uh, the dials have all turned to eyeballs and the the there's tentacles and there's depth to it all and the dimensions in the air seem to have changed and the whole thing is glowing. I don't think and we can you, stop this. <laughs> you definitely get the feeling that there's a personality to it. Mm -hmm. And there is this beam of energy or light that's shining out the front of it, though you can't see the front of it. You can see that it lights mm -hmm. up the the area. Um, um, the car. <laughs> well, there doesn't seem to be a coupling anymore. It's kind of fusing itself yeah. to the train. Um. Meanwhile, but how, many Nuda, how many points do I lose for that failure? Oh, do a one d. Well, let's do a one d six for this thing. Six. Ah! Ah, fuck. <laughs> bad choice, bad choice. <laughs> uh, 1d8. Okay. Eight. Oh, no. Uh, no. 1d8, that is the red mist. Oh, no. Um, so, uh, 
you are going to begin to try and attack this thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Theodore, you see him suddenly grab the top of his head and he (sighs) unloads his gun into it. He throws his gun at it. He grabs a shovel and he starts running forward Mm -hmm. or climbing forward to hit this thing. Uh, (sighs) But we'll, we'll stop there for a moment. Uh, (laughs) Dr. Neruda and Dr. Kurz, uh, you make your way back through the foregon. Uh, you get to the second foregon, and standing at the opposite end of the foregon, uh, before it would go into this cathedral car, there's a young boy. He looks like he's maybe 14. Uh, oh. He is dressed in... Uh, alternating colored red and gold uniform. Uh, He has a little staff in his hand. And as you move forward, he smiles at you. Uh, Hello. I see that you have joined our train. Are you uh, Dr. Neruda and Dr. Kurz? Yes, that, that would be us. He reaches into his tunic and he pulls out a scroll and he unrolls it like this. And he says, Hmm. in a very formal language, he says, "Um, my master, the Jigsaw Prince, uh, requests your presence. He is willing to offer a temporary truce uh, and forgive Slight's past. Um, he wishes to parlay with you. And then Seems he like back up the scroll. Well, I believe that. Uh, I can't speak for my partner, but I believe that um, Naruda and Kerr's um, dream attorneys will. Accept this parlay. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, when you say that the lad smiles, there are many kinds of smiles. Was this a, a warm smile? A friendly smile? A courtly smile. A courtly a smile. Little. Not a hungry smile. No. Say. no. Uh, yeah. Um, on the terms that we will. Uh, End the parley unharmed unless an agreement is made. Yeah, I agree with Dr. Neruda. We accept his terms. It's a magnificent train you have here. Um, He doesn't respond. He says, please follow me. And as he steps forward, doors that you didn't quite notice were there before open in a big double door thing and ahead of him is the inside of what is the size of a cathedral um the time and space dimensionality seems to be like mimi uh like mimi's train uh You step inside, and as you sort of cross the threshold, there's a feeling like everything goes quiet. Uh, You no longer can hear the train. You can't hear any of the commotion from behind. And when you look back, well, you can't really see, but it definitely seems like your perspective, your time is going much, much slower than the rest of the world. Or what is that what I mean? No, Faster. It's the, the, yeah, their time is going much, much slower. Um, everything is holding its breath, as it were. Cool. Uh, and inside, up towards where the altar is, there is a vault and a, and a dais and another dais. And on top of it is a golden throne. And you see the man you've seen before, uh, the the Duke uh, Jean uh, Florisas de Sassant, uh, dressed in finery and gold, uh, sitting up there. 
And uh, he says, please, please come forward. Yes, what brings you to our train on this fine evening? Well, that's kind of the question I have for you. Um, this sort of magic cannot pass through my realm without me noticing that something seriously out of the ordinary is going on. Is this one of you or your companions that's doing this magic? Mm -hmm. No, this is uh, one Mr. Malficott. Malficott? Recent, well, his son, the junior, uh, yeah. disposed of his father um, and has decided to run the show. He's what the one this? who's taken over the train. What is this you're saying? Uh, it's not Suleiman? No, Suleiman is dead. Murdered by his Suleiman chief son. Dead. His chief son, who has completed the ritual to enact the simulacrum. As Assad? Yeah. Oh, the last I saw him, he was a, a mere child of seven. Has it no, been he's... that long? Well, it has been that long, and he's uh, not taking his adulthood lightly, let's say. So... What was that you said? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I was so shocked by yeah, yeah. that I, year old boy. Uh, he has completed the ritual of the uh, Sedefka Simulacrum. Uh, he is, in, he is uh, merged with a powerful ancient artifact that makes him exceptionally dangerous and yeah, in all likelihood, he's going to reorder the civilization of the mundane world oh. if he is not stopped. Oh. What a what a what a ridiculous thing to desire. Um, tell me about this. You say it's an artifact. What what is it? Tell me about it. Well, it's ancient. It's ancient. It was discovered in an underground cave by a group of Romans. Um, it's had many keepers throughout its time, most notably Sedefkar. It's, uh, I think it's a, uh, an extra-dimensional artifact, perhaps, or something from the deep future. It seems to be a very high technology, as well as conferring on our primitive minds, certain ritual magics, much to do with the flesh. Oh, that's that. Uh, the look on his face at that moment is kind of disgust. But he says, he says, my God, he says, uh, uh, well, uh, you don't need to do psychology to realize the man is practically drooling. Mm. He says, and, and this, this, object I, I don't understand how are you involved in this why are you here what are, what what is please enlighten me the last thing was the scroll and i wanted it for my collection i didn't even know what it was it took me it took me 3 days to figure out that what you gave me was nonsense you honor me uh, the forgery is mine. The, uh, the scroll, we were seeking scrolls because we were under the impression that they could help control this artifact, which again is something of significant power and danger and corruption. But we were being misled all along. Two of and our compatriots have died in the process. And, and all of this is Macriot. Malficat. Malficat, sorry. The Malficat. younger. Yeah. He's gotten quite powerful. Yes. Uh, you see what's the train you've attached yourself to, which is increasingly an organic, um, and I would say demonic vessel that's it's, racing across it's, Europe. It's an avatar there. 
the Brotherhood of the Skin are idiots. Uh, stupid. I, I knew Suleiman. I I studied uh, what Suleiman was preaching, and uh, I was not impressed. It took me very little time to realize that that was not the direction to go. Who wants to rule the world? What nonsense. What a whole lot of boring, boring red tape that would mean. Uh, I, I don't believe it, but uh, so how how do we proceed? Are you saying that, I mean, Malfacott then is on this train? Malfacott well, yes. becomes the engine of the train. He is either directing it or he is becoming the engine of the train. The no. artifact in question, I believe, is stored in one of the the cabins immediately behind this one. Once again, that sort of slab, like, like you're off, you're you're offering him the tastiest morsel he could ever imagine at this point. Um, so as that's going on, Gunter and Theodore, what are you guys going to do up front? Uh, I'm just going to keep swinging until I snap out of my oh, that's uh, right. yeah. temporary insanity. Theodore, what do you do? Um, okay, so so if if it's if it's if it can't be uncoupled between the engine and the coal car, then the coal car and the rest of the train needs to be uncoupled. Otherwise, this is going south fast. So I'm going to climb back down into the car, and and uh, if there's anyone from the train that snapped out of it and can help, I'm seeking that out. Right. But I don't want to. It until I can get Gunther back into this part of the train. When you um, step down uh, onto the, the floor level of the train, you suddenly realize that the other guards and anyone else who might have been there seem to be frozen in position. They're not moving. Oh, jeez. Even though the train is moving. Generally not good. And I'm guessing by myself, without any real knowledge of how to uncouple the cars, <laughs> would probably take me an hour to figure out that process and would still need help. Okay, so I just have to focus on getting Gunther out. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Okay, so I'll start crossing the 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 coal car towards okay. Gunther. And as long as he doesn't look like he's going to try killing me, I can try. Pulling yeah. It. Yeah. Be a little careful with that. Uh, Gunter, uh, mm -hmm. do a luck roll. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 45. And I just spent enough luck today to only have 41 luck. <laughs> so fail. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Theodore, as you get to the front of the coal car, to your horror, uh, you see Gunter. Uh, who's raving? Yeah, uh, he's managed to get a fire axe in his hand. Oh Jesus! Yeah, and, I'm keeping my distance. I'm not stupid. And quite recklessly, he oh, is walking along the fleshy oh. ledge, uh, oh. trying to hack at the engine oh. and heading actually around the outside of it towards the front end of mm. it. It's so moist, Theodore. Look how it sl splatters when you hack it. <laughs> Do I take a sand check at this? Uh, you can take a sand check, sure. And Gunter, you can see that, uh, well, you can't really realize it. You think you're doing damage, but you're not really doing uh -huh. any damage yeah. to it. Yeah, 68 out of 57. That's a uh, one one d six for you, Theodore. Mm -hmm. No, no, no! I rolled exactly what you rolled six. I better not. I, I'm probably going to join you. Yeah. One d. It is one d. You're right. It's so one d eight. Oh, whew. okay. I don't know what this one is. Seven. Uh seven. Do a one d four. 1d4. Uh, what is that? Uh, 
Okay, that's interesting. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what you got was hallucinate a significant fictional person. Um, I don't think anybody's ever rolled that before. Sherlock Holmes? I don't know. Oh, yeah, uh, Sherlock Holmes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> should be there. Well, we'll say that you 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 tell me uh, Sherlock you have to help us figure this out what's the answer how do we get out of this you have to save your friend <laughs> the uh, I say Watson you have to save your friend <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right so we'll go back to the others in the cathedral car there's something I can do to help you, but I'll need something in return. Okay. What is? What are the terms of your deal here? Well, you can guess that what I want is that thing that, what did you call it? The simulacrum. Yes, yes. Uh, but... What I can offer you is something quite powerful. You see, Suleiman and his little cult, religious cult, they now now when you're looking at him, you can see that he's got bits and pieces of different colored skin that he's incorporated. He says, You see, the spell that they use to swap out their organs. Mm. Um, it's it's originally a kind of complicated, I don't know if you'd want to call it some sort of medical magic. Uh, uh, I don't think, I don't think that Suleiman originated it. I think it came from something he may have discovered along the way. And he and his people have been using it for centuries the problem is, is that the counterspell to it is really very simple. You don't say. That's quite interesting. Of course, ideally, according to them, you would have to have the replacement organs. If one doesn't have the replacement organs, simply removes all of the, the stuff that's been done. Do you understand? Oh, yeah. yeah, I believe so. There's a great deal of retrograde separation of parts. Indeed. And probably degradation of the older bits. Yeah, Indeed. Uh, that spell is of great interest. The spell consists of three words and a few gestures. I could teach it to you, but I would need your absolute assurance that when you recover this simulacrum, that it comes to me. And the scrolls that go with it. Uh, if we have, if any of that material still exists, it was all taken from us by Suleiman's son. As long as I don't think that you're keeping something back from me. And then we'll just consider all of our differences between us over and Resolved. done with. Yeah. Dr. Neruda, what, do you see any loopholes in this contract? Should, by the end of this ordeal, the simulacrum is still intact. And as, and, it can be we, yours. and as far as we know, there's no way to destroy it, earthly, no earthly way. Uh, how would we deliver it to you? Should it be recoverable? You said it's on this train. We believe so, yeah. We have not located it. At the moment, I dare not step foot off of my cathedral car if Malfacott is indeed here. He represents too much of a threat to me. But once he is dispatched by you, 
I will join you on the train and you can turn it over to me. I have ways of traveling, as you recall. And he sort of reaches down to his side pocket and pulls out a little bit of horsehair loop. Mm -hmm. Do we have an agreement? If there were time, I would suggest that we coordinate with the remaining fellows of our little band. But I think we must make a snap decision here. Her Your friend, yes, I, I feel... Your friends are up front fighting the beast. Yeah, that sounds eminently unwise. I'm sorry. I will need an assurance that you promise on your hearts, cross your heart and hope to die, that you will honor your bargain with me. Well, you don't leave us with much of a choice. No, I suppose you don't have much of a choice. And it is agreed. You have paper and pen. I will tell you what to do. And he says, the three words are atal, A-T-A-L, manic, M-A-N-A-K, theogla, T-H-E-O-G-L-A. And when you say them, you do atal, Manak Theogla. Theogla. It should immediately take effect instantaneously. I shall practice Atal Manak Theogla. Correct. I was hoping he would dissolve. He looks at you and he says, Don't think I'm a fool. <laughs> I wouldn't use I wouldn't use the Brotherhood's stupid half thought through magic to do this yeah do you know uh, uh -huh. anything about the the strange blade i don't know what you're talking about yeah it's probably for the best we leave it i don't have it to offer you well so we go back <laughs> into the world attempt this simple recitation and if we survive, he yes. will join us in the human realm. You assure us also that if you take this simulacrum, you will return to this plane of existence, yeah? I I have no reason whatsoever to try to rule the world. I uh, have a collection. I keep my collection. I look at my collection. But I don't try to rule the world with it. Yeah. And that is an assurance? It is my nature. Very well. Dr. Neruda, shall we? Yes, yes. Remind me of the hand gestures again. Atal, Atal Manak, Theogla. Theogla. Atal, Manak. Theogla. All right. Um, the little page leads you back towards the doors, and uh, the door is open. You step back out into the fork on. The doors close, and it's as if they were never there. And there's a brisk wind and the movement of a train going ever faster. Yeah. Do you... There is the foregone door. You try to open the foregone door. Is the first or second? I mean, the I mean, you just came through the giant doors into the foregone, but then turning right around, now there's just the foregone door going into the restaurant. Yeah. So it does it go into the restaurant? It seems to. Yeah, it's like that train was never there. That car is everybody frozen. Oh, uh, no. Nobody is frozen in here. Okay. Okay, let's get up to the front of the train and solve this problem. Hopefully yeah. That, 
from the I guess the front door of the of the foremost foregone because the coal train is already changing. Right. Yeah. So you manage to get forward, uh, you open the door, and uh, by hook or by crook, you can see that Gunter and Theodore are struggling up up front. Uh, Gunter, by now you're starting to uh, come to, and as you have moved along the side of the engine, hacking at it, you've moved almost into the front of it. And yeah. what you can hey. see is, uh, instead of the headlight, there is a gigantic three-lobed eye with light streaming out of it, shining mm -hmm. forward. And the thing is making noise like uh, some sort of prehistoric monster as it's rushing forward Ugh. at breakneck speed. You've started going downhill now, and it's getting even faster. Mm -hmm. uh, swing that fire axe and try and just hit that eye. Yeah, nothing's happening. Okay. It's just bouncing off of it. A tall monarch, the ogla. Tall monarch, the ogla. <laughs> Nothing is happening for you guys uh, as you're watching this. Um, oh, up God. ahead, up ahead, you can see the the, the city of uh, Lausanne, and the train is not slowing down. And it you pass through the Lausanne station in a matter of two seconds, whoosh, yeah. going through with all of the passengers or the people on the deck or the the platform looking at you going like this uh, in terror. Now you're heading towards Paris, mm. breakneck speed. So, uh, Nuruda, we go back and we keep repeating it until we run across. Until we, we find him, yes. This seems to be a hopeless situation up here. He's trying to get back as soon as possible. Go to in Theodore. You've 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 come to your senses. And yeah, I'm gonna start easing way. back yeah. because, like, being on the front of a speeding train seems like a bad spot. Oh, and I, I look off into into a, a space that's not occupied by anyone, and I lock eyes with that emptiness, and I thank you, Sherlock. You saved us. <laughs> <laughs> all right um <laughs> so you guys make your way back into the foregone and dr roland and dr uh neruda uh you are heading back into the train you go back through the foregones into the restaurant um there are people in the restaurant they are holding on uh as the train is moving they're looking out the windows in terror uh Women are crying. Well, hopefully they won't notice this oddity. A tall monarch. My knock. Yogla. A tall monarch. Yogla. And just as bracing ourselves against the tables and posts, we'll make our way back. And I think addressing each person, he's far right. there back. Yeah. But they, they all look at you like you're, what the hell, you know? Uh, so we'll be lucky you, if they don't shoot us as cultists at this right. You get through them. You, yeah. I mean, you've noticed that um, Emilio is there. Henry Matthew is there. His wife is there. Uh, uh, Kurt Gronick, Amumu, and Kiyoshi are all there. The only one who's missing is Sir Robert Haro. Oh, okay. okay. Let's go find him. He could, right. If he's hiding in his room, we know where that is. Yep. It's Four, I believe. Five, six. Five and six. It's Dr. Kurz, it's your old room. Yeah. So we can start outside, hopefully, and blunt an attack from within. So as you move forward to, or as you move back to uh, room five and six which is uh where you were before you can definitely see blue light coming from underneath the door yeah let's let's get them try it from outside first yeah 
And then uh, if it doesn't work, those people are kick open the door. Oh, okay. you mean, oh, from outside the door, we try the spell. Yeah. Sure, the locks. A tall lock. Theogla. That's the door in. <laughs> I, I give a good hard run with my massive bulk into the door to try and burst it open. Okay. Do a strength roll. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to like what I see in here. Extreme! <laughs> yeah, the doors aren't that heavy, you know. Yeah. So you smash the door, and standing in the room, uh, sort of in front of the window, is uh, is uh, Sir Robert Haro, and he has his hands like this. Oh, and you can see oh. that his countenance is glowing. His eyes are rolled up into his head, and he is whispering something that sounds like it's in Arabic. Well, Oh. He's, he's doing this. Uh, uh. That's Paul. Manak. Yoga. As soon as you do that, his eyes roll back down. He looks at you, and he he barely has enough time to scream out, no, like mm. this, mm. as his entrails and everything rip themselves out of his body and they land in your outstretched hands. Oh, wow. oh, oh God. God. He could have oh, mentioned God. that. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he screams. One of his eyes has come out and in, into your hands. Uh, he falls to the ground in a heap and for a few moments he twitches and writhes as blood starts to flow out of him. The light goes out, and you suddenly can definitely feel the train is decelerating. Remember us? <laughs> you know what? That's that sounds like a really good spot to stop. <laughs> and our next episode will probably, probably, I think it'll be our last episode. You have killed Malficot. You guys can do uh, 3d6 uh, to add to your sanity. Ooh, thank you. And then what we will handle is how do you want to deal with uh, Duke Jean Florissant des Assant? Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, David Gassaway, Stuart Lightley, and Keith Craig with yours truly as the Keeper of Arcane Lore. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you would like to show us your appreciation, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description, or you can use the thanks button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. Good gaming.